Welcome everybody to this video on inside the mind of an instructional designer. I'm Kim. This is Hannah. We are basically, we've created questions for each other, which we haven't shared yet. And we're going to do quick fire. We're rapid getting better fire. at rapid fire, <laughs> um, but we're going to ask them of each other and get insights into the answers of the questions. So Hannah, you're up first. I have prepared my suite of questions. <gasps> the pressure is on. What weekly actions do you take to continuously develop as an instructional designer? Ooh. Um, well, I'm lucky because I have my learning time. Mm. Um, so I think something that I do is I look out into the world of what other people are doing. I look for inspiration. Um, I speak to you. So everything that I work on, I question you. And if I see you doing something that I think is like a cool thing and that I see it having an impact, I speak to you about it. Um, so yeah, I guess it's just like speaking to others who are also learning instructional design yeah. and other instructional designers and getting insight from them and practicing things. Mm, yeah. So that learning time is we as a team have an hour each week to learn something that will help contribute to what we do. Next question. What's your favorite task as an instructional designer? Ooh, I think it would be storyboarding. Mm. I really love having the high level strategy and bringing it to life. So figuring out like how is going to be a good way to display the content or the information in a way that the learner will understand it and comprehend mm -hmm. it. Um, and I think it's also a great opportunity to make realistic learning solutions because I love human centered design. So mm. storyboarding, it enables me to think of scenarios using the insights from the discovery. Phase. Cool. It's my favorite. What's a process you've put in place for yourself that makes your role as an instructional designer easier? Ooh. Um, I think it's, well, the storyboard template is one of the things, but mm. that's something that we did as a team. But just having that template there where I just need to fill in the different parts makes it a lot easier for me. Um, so I think definitely using templates. Also having like the human-centered design process that we follow and following mm. those processes, like making sure for every project, are we doing user interviews or are we going to have a discovery workshop? Um, and that process makes it so much easier because I have all of the content. I don't need to look for anything extra. Yeah, nice. All of our processes are on the creatorhub.bellvistastudios.com. You can download the templates and everything that we do. Get them there. Next question. How are you feeling so far? A little bit nervous. Are you? <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad you're going first. Yeah. <laughs> it gives me time to like yeah, you steal your answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's a challenge you faced as an instructional designer and how did you overcome it? Ooh. Um, I think it was a challenge I faced is that the training that I developed wasn't action focused. So I'd often just focus on the knowledge side of things. Mm. And through our conversations, you helped me realize that the whole intent of creating learning solutions is to change behavior. And I think in the past, I've always just focused on knowledge. So transitioning into that, um, focusing on the actions that you can take. Um, and that was through action mapping. So looking at Kathy Moore's action mapping process, I think that really helped me to create learning that actually made a difference and changed people's behavior. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> How is the role of the instructional designer changing in your experience? Ooh, I think it's changing in a way that lots of different industries are coming together. And we've spoken about this before. Mm. Um, so for example, thinking about marketing, like I feel like a lot of my role now, I didn't, I didn't think instructional design would be about this, but for example, like marketing teams have to think about who their customer is and how to speak their language and how to motivate them. Um, psychology is another part, like I love psychology and I didn't think that would be a big part of instructional design, but thinking about how humans work and how we learn and what motivates us. Um, so it's almost like other industries are like blending with instructional design and it's all becoming one, um, which I think is really cool because it means we can motivate and mm. reach our goals using lots of different methodologies. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I love about our team. We're always looking at other industries and thinking about how can we use what they do for what we're trying to achieve. Mm. This is not rapid fire. <laughs> this is turning into a very 
Well, it's not a podcast on one yeah. like, whole thing. So I think we're doing yeah, it's reasonably. Just, yeah, adding value. Yeah. <laughs> Are you finished on that one now? <laughs> Give me a couple more minutes to think about that. Okay. Um, do you have any formal qualifications as an instructional designer? Psychology. So I do. So I don't have an instructional design degree, but I studied psychology and it's been so useful for this. Mm. Like I was saying before, like there's so much in what we do as instructional designers that involves thinking about how to motivate people and how humans work and how we think and how we change behavior. So for me, psychology like really added value to what I do as an instructional mm -hmm. designer. And I think instructional design has taken psychology to like the next level for me in terms of what I'm interested in because it helps me like make people be, be like better mm. and help them do something differently to contribute to something bigger. Um, so yeah, I guess the, you don't need to have an instructional design degree. I was lucky because you hired me without an instructional design degree, but I know you've said it's you don't have to have it. Like it's stuff mm. you can learn on the job and there's so much on Google and on YouTube that you can look up. Yep. Um, we have our YouTube mm. channel that has so much. Like I would be looking at all of our videos mm -hmm. if I was wanting to become an instructional yeah. designer. Um, cause yeah, we talk about everything. Everything we know is on YouTube. Yeah. So you can learn everything we do. <laughs> There's a there. video on there actually called, do I need a degree to be an instructional designer? So mm. if that's a question you're pondering, check it out. Um, I want to add in a question following on from your saying your psych stuff and the linkages and how that's helped you be a better instructional designer. Mm -hmm. Are there any um, things that people, like you've probably written a blog on this anyway, mm. that they could, that's a practical takeaway that they could go and do if that's a skill they want to develop for themselves? Um, so there's like psychology, is it heuristics? Is that how you say it? <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know what that word but it's means. Like, but um, <laughs> so it's like all these different things that people experience um, that, can help you develop good learning. So an example is like, I think it's the familiarity effect. Mm. And it says that what we know or what's familiar to us, we're more likely to like it. So the more that you see someone or the more that you see a certain object or thing, the more likely you are to like it over time. Mm. Um, so that's just an example of a concept that you can look at. Um, the mere exposure effect, that mm. was, that's it, that's what I was talking about. Um, so yeah, if you look up psychology for learning, like there will be so many different things and we have written blogs on it. Um, but yeah, it's basically just like the human mind, what motivates us thinking about emotions as well. So a big part of psychology is obviously like the way we experience emotions, mm. um, and that we've designed solutions in a way where we want to elicit certain emotions in people to motivate them. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's cool. so much I could talk for hours, but <laughs> Cut it short. Rapid, sorry. <laughs> rapid. Keep it rapid. Okay, last question that I have for you is mm -hmm. In your opinion, what are the key characteristics of a strong instructional design mindset? Oh, that's one of my questions for you. <laughs> Let me just get my pen. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's almost like stopping to think. Hmm like being thoughtful in the way that you think about things. That's something that I've learnt over time. Um, don't just rush into, okay, I'm going on and on. Thoughtful, think things through. <laughs> um, it's like goal oriented, like focused on the goal and every decision you make needs to align with the goal that you're mm -hmm. trying to achieve. Um, I think empathetic, because if mm -hmm. you're going to design solutions that change behavior, you need to be empathetic mm. towards the people that will be impacted by it they would be the main things i think thanks hannah no worries. Give, give her a high five <laughs> round of applause watchers at home <laughs> all right are you ready i am pressure's on kim <laughs> all right so what are the key characteristics <laughs> of an instructional design mindset um to be goal orientated and to be curious. Love it. Very cool. How do you determine what the true problem is? Ask questions. Um, until there is no question left to ask. I think when you've exhausted all your questions, then you know that you're, you've identified something. It will reveal itself. What's an example of a question you would ask? Mm. What do you mean by that? 
what does that look like? Why is that a challenge? How do you know that that's a challenge? You're good at asking questions. That's why I asked. Um, what should every instructional designer do? Be goal orientated. <laughs> Be curious. Nice, nice. How do you make training solutions engaging? Replicate the real world. Nice. <laughs> Um, what does the future of instructional design look like? Solving the right problem, not what you think is the problem or you've been told is the problem. What's the best process for instructional designers to follow? Best process. Hmm. Our human centered design process. <laughs> yeah, I feel like what we have discovered through experimentation all our learning and synthesizing that into a process has just made us more effective as a team and create better results for our clients and we're seeing the results mm. like the feedback is there whether it's data or testimonials um so our process which looks like solving the right problem um having the right people in the room to agree on the goal the success statement and then focusing on um, empathizing with the end user and focusing on the actions, the need to know content, replicating the real world Love with it. a solution you create. Totally agree. Awesome. What's the best activity for understanding what's important to your learner? Speak to them or observe them to be able to replicate the real world. What has been your biggest insight as an instructional designer this year? This year? 2020. Mm. That everything that we do, regardless of the task, can be solved by having a clear goal, understanding the current state, and closing the gap by being curious and asking questions. Love it. <laughs> Simple, isn't Rinse it? Rinse and repeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between an instructional designer and an e-learning developer? Um, instructional designer is extracting the content to decide what needs to be trained to achieve the goal. Mm -hmm. And they provide it to the e-learning developer to transform that into a tangible product. Nice. Good explanation. What advice do you have for a new instructional designer? follow us on YouTube and Instagram and LinkedIn <laughs> Not the and yeah, just it's learn true, from though. us. Yeah. And through that, we recommend other people that we're learning from, or we ask our community, what are you guys learning? And we share that like a recent post mm. is what books are you people reading? And then yeah. our community tells us, and then we tell you. So I guess we're curating that content, but we're also sharing everything that we're learning mm. daily. So that would be the place to start. Yeah. Because it comes from the heart. 100%. It's so good. I would be like right into it. Mm. <laughs> and I am. Like I watch it now and I'm part of the team. Yeah. I <laughs> learned from our videos. Stuff, I'm, I'm like, like oh, this is wow. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> advice for an intermediate instructional designer? Uh, learn human-centered design. Yes. Nice. Yeah. That's an Great. essential key to future-proof when you talked about the world's coming together, change management, mm. psychology, marketing, mm. the key toolkit that is allowing them to be successful and the common denominator between all of them is a human centered design approach to solve the right problem. So learn that. Yeah, Check 100%. out our creator hub and our YouTube playlist on all of the activities that you can run. Mm. It's changed my life. Human centered design this is as an instructional designer. <laughs> I would just like to say, <laughs> Oh, and you don't go on, continue. <laughs> Where do you look for wait, wait, inspiration? It's changed your life. People want to know no, how your life it. has been changed. Okay, it was rapid fire. That was your first. <laughs> Hannah's first rapid fire. Hold on. I can't life. do rapid fire. It's something I'm working on. <laughs> it's just changed both of our lives, I think. I will speak on behalf of both of us. <laughs> and you guys should definitely do it. Okay, on to the next question. Where do you look for inspiration? <laughs> um, where do I look for inspiration? Oh, Jesus. Specifically on what? 
how to be a good and all like how to design. Oh, we're on instructional solutions. design. Yeah. How do I get inspiration as an instructional designer? Mm. Um, replicate the real world. Yeah. And so that is inspiration every time because I don't know all the possibilities, but if I see what it looks like in the real world, then it's about replicating that. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Okay, this is a good one. <laughs> yeah, I think so. so. <laughs> you guys I'm so modern and judges. <laughs> What's the best way? Because I struggled with this for okay. a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna talk for a little while. coaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I really need to know that. <laughs> this um, is not bringing value to you. This is Hannah being selfish and <laughs> trying to get her learning hour oh, extended. All instructional designers here, right? Yeah, go on. <laughs> go on. <laughs> um, what's the best way to remember information that a client drip feeds you throughout a project? Because I know I would like the client would tell me something, mm. and then later on I wouldn't do it, and I'd be like, oh my god, they told me that in an email ages ago, but like. Oh, a working Word document, I guess, is the simplest thing that's always there. Everyone on the project team that has access to it can just jump in. Anytime something is communicated, it's just copy and pasted in and documented. And every time yeah. you complete a task, you just revisit that list. Has this impacted anything or have I taken action that I need to action as a result of that and tick it off as your own checklist? Yeah. And then nice. mark it complete if it no longer impacts the project. What is your weird smile for? <laughs> what key oh, considerations? There you go. <laughs> what, are the, what are the key considerations when start, starting an instructional design project? To solve the right problem. Boom. <laughs> Rewind and go watch the <laughs> questions that you should ask to do that in the previous <laughs> question. Yeah, <laughs> true. Um, what's your advice for managing stakeholders as an instructional designer? listen to understand the right problem because sometimes they're trying to communicate something that they don't communicate the right way and you might go off and solve the wrong problem so try and listen to figure out what is the problem that it, they are trying to communicate be clear on your goal have an intent for that conversation and then ask questions to reveal and solve the right problem nice that's it you're done you're Woo! a cook. well done all right. Thank you, everyone, for watching Inside the Mind of an Instructional Designer. You should actually uh, ask us questions and see. That might build some future content if there's things that we haven't answered that you want to know the question to. I would encourage you to share this with anyone you believe it will add value to. And go check out our Creator Hub for more learning or the other videos and all the content on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, or the, our Creator Hub to add value to your life. And we appreciate you watching to the end of the video. Have an awesome day.